Good morning, everyone. Um, I have a special mask on today, and I just wanted to point it out. It's very large, but it's one of my favorites because it's got the Supreme Court justices on it, all the women uh, that have served or are currently serving on the Supreme Court. So Sandra Day O'Connor, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, uh, Elena Kagan, and Sonia Sotomayor. So I'm very proud of my mask. I got it when I was out and about a couple weekends ago, so I just thought I would share it. A little bit of levity for the day. Actually, today is a fairly good news day, and we're going to hear from Greg about that, and we have a special guest with us as well. Uh, but before we get to that, um, thank you to Jay and Vicki for interpreting this morning. I'm always grateful for them serving the community. Um, we'll get right to the numbers. So the increase, or, or rather the total positive cases in Hamilton County are at 11,826. The increase from last week is 541. The total hospitalizations in Hamilton County are at 1,067. The increase from last week is six. And the total number of deaths related to COVID-19 in Hamilton County are at 288. The increase from last week is one. So for those of you keeping track, those numbers are relatively low, in fact, significantly lower than what we have been reporting in the last couple of weeks by way of the, um, the changes week to week. And so to give some context to this, uh, last week we reported 622 increase from the week previous for positive cases, now we're at 541. You can see a, a decline there. Um, the hospitalizations were, not, the increase last week was 19, now we're at six. And the increase of deaths um, from last week, that week to week increase was six, we're at one this week. So I'm gonna let Greg elaborate on these numbers, but clearly what you all are doing out in this community is working right now. Um, and I think we have reason to celebrate now that all tempered with what we think might show up uh, in a week or two or three related to the holiday weekend. I think uh, many of us are concerned about the family gatherings and some people letting their guard down when they're with um, individuals that they don't necessarily live with but they know well. Um, and there's always that danger of spread when people aren't wearing masks or getting too close to one another. But at this moment in time, these are pretty good numbers. So, in addition to Greg Kesterman, the County Public Health Commissioner, we have Regina Carswell Russo here. She's with the Regional COVID Communications Center. Um, she is going to discuss how our regional partners are educating young adults about the spread of the coronavirus. So, we talked last week about some of these concerns related to college students being back on campus or off campus um, and having parties, getting together socially, and how well they may be un uh, non symptomatic, asymptomatic. Um, they may not know they're carrying, but then they interact with someone, say a parent or a grandparent, that person gets COVID-19 and gets very sick. And so we have a lot of concern about this and educating young people as to the dangers of the spread of COVID, even if they're asymptomatic. The need to get tested and the need to practice safe distancing and wear the mask. And so Regina is going to talk to us about that and bring us um, up to date on what the universities are doing. But first, a quick announcement. Um, so you probably saw last week's eviction moratorium by the CDC. It is important for the public to understand that the protection from eviction is not automatic. People who qualify need to file a form with the court to prevent being evicted. So these forms are available over at the self, self I'm having some trouble talking today, the um, self-help center over in the courthouse on the first floor so the forms are available there, or you can contact Legal Aid. Uh, you do it by email, lascinti.org. Lascinti.org. Uh, make sure you are taking that extra step so that you're, you're not getting evicted. And remember that the Hamilton County has set up a rental assistance program. We have devoted $7 million as a county commission to this effort. Uh, remember in the beginning, we had a, a big surge of individuals that were applying for these dollars, but we have st still available dollars uh, for those that are in need of rental assistance. And so I'm going to remind you about the contact information 
Um, you can either go to hamiltoncountyohio.gov and look for the tab related to rental assistance, or you can t contact one of the providers that we are partnering with to disperse these funds. First is the Community Action Agency. They are at CINCY, C-I-N-C-Y, dash C-A-A dot org. Or you can go to the Free Store Food Bank website. It is at freestorefoodbank.org. Or you can go to the Talbert House website. That is talberthouse.org. Very good. All right. Thank you, Jay. One last thing. Um, as you know, we've been rolling out testing throughout Hamilton County, and we're starting to get geared up on this. Um, so Test and Protect is Hamilton County's partnership with the Health Collaborative to provide 175,000 tests, and it's up and running. So some of the testing sites that are coming up, and I just want to note them, uh, these are the pop-up sites throughout the community. We've got a pop-up site at Roberts Academy on Grand Avenue in East Price Hill on Saturday and Sunday, Saturday from 9 to 1, and Sunday from 11 to 3. We've got another site. It's at the Inspirational Baptist Church on Sebring Drive. It's in Forest Park. Next Tuesday from 8 to 1. Anybody can come to these sites. An appoint appointment is not necessary, and the t test is provided at no cost to you. If you have insurance, your insurance will be billed, but if you do not, you can get the test for free. All right, so that's all I have this morning. I'm going to turn it over to Greg for the numbers and the trends. Well, good morning, and I appreciate the opportunity to provide this update. Last week when I was here, I was sharing concerns about a significant increase in cases, and I am happy to look at the data right now, and over the last several days, we've actually started to see a decline. I'm very happy to see that, obviously, we want to see Hamilton County continue to be successful with our response to COVID-19. Before I dive into the numbers, I, um, um, I'll provide a graphic regarding some testing here in Hamilton County. Uh, the, f the two sites were just mentioned by Commissioner Driehaus. I really encourage you to go get tested. Don't forget our website, hcph.org, lists a whole variety of testing opportunities throughout Hamilton County. In addition, if you work at a business that needs to bring testing to your business because of a, an increase in cases within employees, or if you live in a community and have a resource where you'd like to bring testing to your community, the website listed healthcollab.org is a great opportunity. That is H-E-A-L-T-H-C-O-L-L-A-B dot O-R-G. So please consider that as another resource to bring testing to your community. I know that there is much planning uh, underway and we will continue to see more sites here throughout this fall uh, sponsored by the Health Collaborative and the county, Hamilton County as well. Looking at the data, I wanted to show a graphic of that uh, decline in cases that we're starting to see. I continue to mark where the July 8th masking mandate went into place for Hamilton County. On the far right side of that graphic, you can start to see over the last four or five days our cases starting to come back down. We are watching this closely as we want to continue to see this trend in the right direction. I am very hopeful that these cases have now peaked and will continue to maintain on this decline. Last week and again today, I continue to talk about the age demographic of the 18 to 24 year olds. Last week, I was reporting nearly 18 to 20 percent individuals in that demographic coming back with a positive test. This time, it's much lower, although still elevated. It's made a significant improvement. So I'm very hopeful that our messaging is working and we're starting to see some change in behaviors. Remember, if you're going to parties, um, you are exposing yourself to COVID-19 and you risk getting COVID-19 and spreading it to others within our community. So it's continuing to be important that you follow all of the public health guidance that we're giving, including wearing masks and paying attention to social distancing. I mentioned last week, and I want to say this one more time, if you are taking risks that you know are exposing yourself, 
please be extra cautious when you're around others, particularly those older family members and friends, so that we're not seeing COVID-19 transfer into the older demographics. Uh, it's worth noting that all the other age demographics remain stable with regards to their positivity rates. Last week when I was here, I also reported our reproductive number was 1.22. In fact, last week it made it as high as 1.26. I'm happy to report this morning we are at 0 0.94, so we're back under one, which means that the pandemic in our county is slightly on the decline again. So we wanna to continue to see this number below one and get as close to zero as possible. Our regional uh, reproductive number, which is a 14 county region, is at 1.01. .01. If we continue to see cases decline, we'll continue to see both of these indicators decline as well. Hospitalizations and deaths, as Commissioner Driehaus just indicated, are looking very positive. We're seeing a decline in both of these numbers. This includes intensive care unit admissions. It includes just Hamilton County as well as the region. So we're looking very good with both of these indicators. Knowing that we did just have a slight spike in the number of cases, we will be watching closely over the coming weeks to make sure we don't see spikes with, with these indicators as well. I'm very hopeful though that the college age uh, folks that have gotten sick are listening to our messaging and being extra cautious when they're around those elderly individuals so that this does not spread uh, further into our community. Uh, the, <clears throat> the Hamilton or the Ohio alert system also for Hamilton County last week remained orange. It is my anticipation based on what's happening that this week we will remain orange as well. We'll be watching this closely on Thursday when the governor makes his announcement. Please don't forget though that level two or orange means that there is still increased spread and exposure within our county. We must continue to exercise a high degree of caution. To that end, I really wanna see Hamilton County remain a leader in the state. So please continue to wear your masks. I'm really encouraging parents to help message this both with their kids and college students alike. Make sure that they know that this is the greatest tool that we have right now for combating COVID-19. We don't have a vaccine that's able to be uh, given out to our community yet. Lots of preparation is happening so that when that moment happens, we'll, we'll be ready for it and we'll be able to get it out to the community. But today, those, those basic guidelines for infectious disease control, masking, keeping sick at home, social distancing, hand hygiene, these are the best we have right now. So let's continue to reinforce this so we can get through this fall. We all wanna get things back to normal and the more we take these extra steps now, the more this fall will feel like normal. I really am proud of our community. I really feel like our community has come together and worked hard to help keep COVID as minimal as possible. And I encourage everybody as we continue forward to keep doing the best you can to make Hamilton County safe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Greg. Um, so as promised this morning, we've got Regina Carswell Russo here. She's gonna talk to us about the efforts that are happening on some of the colleges, ca campuses in Hamilton County. Welcome. Thank you, Commissioner Driehaus. It's a pleasure to be here. The Regional COVID Communication Center, for those of you who may not be aware, it is historical. We are bringing together the health communities, the business communities, grassroots communities together to uplift, elevate, and amplify prevention strategies, real prevention strategies that people can use to help reduce the community spread and help people make wise decisions in the ways that they can navigate through the different stages of this pandemic. We have a lot of good news today and we have everything to be hopeful for, especially when it comes to our colleges and universities. When the Regional COVID Communication Center asked the colleges and communities, uh, the universities, we're talking about UC, Xavier, Thomas More, Cincinnati State, NKU, if they would come together to help elevate these messages for our young people, the staff and their parents, they all said yes immediately. And I'm here to tell you about some of the strategies they're employing. We do know that young people get their news and information from different sources. And we know that we have to hit them in every different pathway, the way they see it, the way they hear, the way they feel, and word of mouth. And so let me just tell you about one, Xavier University. I talked to them yesterday and they said that at one point last week, they were at a high, 37 active cases. And then just yesterday, they told me that number stands at 16 students. Their active cases have gone down for four consecutive days. 
they feel that this is because of the concerted effort that they have of uplifting the messages. If we can see, I think you do see the graphic that they have that's all over campus, that's helping people understand just what you can do. You do have the power, what you can do to help control the spread of COVID-19. And so we see that the young people are doing it. And I love that what they're doing on their social media campaign is, I'm a masketeer, because masks we know help. You see, they're also in the game. They created these beautiful videos that explain from the staff perspective and even peer to peer on what students can, should, and must do to control the spread. Take a look. The university has been investing a lot to ensure that students are able to be safe while on campus. And student safety has continued to remain at the forefront of their minds. There is a list of safety protocols that they recently released on how students can remain safe while enjoying the college experience here at UC. In those lists of protocols, they've enforced that all students, staff, and faculty, essentially all visitors on campus, wear facial coverings. Professors will be teaching in larger lecture halls to ensure that there's enough social distancing between students. The university has also invested in hundreds of hand sanitizer dispensers to ensure that no matter where we are on campus, we can stay clean. I would say to incoming students that COVID-19 has left us all with a new sense of appreciation for the little things. And although fall may not be exactly like you expected, things are going to mean so much more when they return back to normal. signage, we have videos, and also the universities have come together and they're going to help share the mask on social media campaign that Procter & Gamble put together for the region. So you're going to see that everywhere, shared on all the social media sites with the universities. When does this happen? When all the universities come together for the common good. Cincinnati State, we know that it's a commuter college, and so we know that the students that are there, they're not just on that site they go back into the neighborhoods and the communities. So what are they doing? Their welcome center. They're making sure that at the point of contact, they have signage, they have information, they're sharing the mask on campaign. And also we gave them tools in which people who are communicating with the students one-on-one, -on -one, remind them before they leave, put your mask on, social distance, and hey, you know what, wash your hands. And we know that it's hard because it's a commuter institution to make sure that that message is, is getting out, but they're doing everything that they can to make sure that every student is touched by this messaging. We know that I, it wasn't that long ago that when I was on college, you went to the bars, you went to the restaurants, and you even worked out. So we are partnering with restaurants and bars and gyms. We know where the young people, the young people live, work, and play, making sure that messages of um, prevention strategies are wrapped all around them. If you see any of our mask on campaign assets on social media, I encourage all of you to share them. And all the universities are out there, just contact RC3 and we'll help you elevate your message. Keep it going. We can do hard things when we're doing it well. Thank you, Regina. Um, so as you can see, we're trying to message into specific communities in the way in which they hear that message and then they can respond to that message. So thank you so much for the update. It's really important, especially with this demographic that we are a little concerned about, um, that they're hearing the message about safe practices, about what they can do to tamp down the spread as they go back to school. Um, so thanks so much for the update. So Bridget, I believe we are ready for questions. Thanks, Commissioner. Hannah Sparling from the Inquirer has a question for you, Commissioner. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm wondering about the Bengals games that are coming up since there are a couple where fans will be allowed and just in general. Uh, does the county have any plans to limit tailgating or I know in Cleveland they actually said no tailgating. Yeah, so we, um, a while back, and Greg Kesterman and I uh, signed off on a letter that went up to the governor's office when the Bengals were anticipating games uh, in the fall. And so there is a safe plan in place 
for those games. Obviously, uh, the jurisdiction lies within the city of Cincinnati, and so Mayor Cranley and Commissioner Melba Moore also approved of those plans and, in fact, I think helped develop those plans. We had some input, too, as to how the Bengals could have fa fans in the stands safely. And so, Greg, I'm trying to remember the tailgating piece, and I think their tailgating was not allowed. Uh, so tailgating, to my understanding, is not allowed for Bengals fans, so far at least, uh, for the upcoming season. Okay, thank you. Next, we have Courtney Francisco from WCPO for you, Greg Kessler. Hi, Greg. I just wanted to ask, yeah, can you discuss if college students are adding to the numbers in Hamilton County, similar to the way Butler County is now in the red because of the spike at Miami? We are not seeing the same significance as Miami did here within our colleges. As we just heard Regina share, we are seeing increases for sure within our college age community. Last week, based on the positivity rate of 18%, we know those college kids were getting tested about 200 times per day. So they were contributing anywhere from 30 to 40 new cases per day to our overall case count. That has come down though, and I believe probably in part because some of the messaging we just heard. So they would be included in our count. Absolutely. So every if every it did case. Have a spike. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Other reporters have any questions? It looks like uh, we have answered all the questions from reporters. Okay, very good. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Regina. Thank you, Greg, for being here. Thank you, Jay and Vicki, as always. One reminder, um, census. Census, census, census. Please fill out your census form. Uh, go online. It takes about five minutes. My2020census.gov. Get that thing filled out so that nobody knocks on your door uh, in the middle of a pandemic. So thanks again. We'll be back next Wednesday.